The new generation of NVIDIA GPUs is here and this time we're starting the lineup off with 4090s. Today we're going to check Asus 4090 Tough Gaming, the non-OC version, we'll check the benchmarks, build quality, thermals, noise levels, but we're also going to discuss the issue with the adapter cable and see whether the coil line is still here. Let's start with build quality of the GPU and the overall aesthetics. Right out of the box we can see that the TAF follows the same aesthetic philosophy as the previous generation of GPUs. It's minimalistic with a lot of grey, gunmetal and dark colors with only a splash of RGB present. Just the small stripe and the TAF logo light up. I would say that this generation's design is even more minimalistic than the previous one with much less going on on the chassis itself. We have the same cooling design with three fans and just a massive heatsink beneath them which works in tandem with a vapor chamber. This combination promises great cooling results and in fact it does keep the temperatures well under control. Usually while gaming the temps do not exceed 60-64 degrees which when we take into account the power draw is a great result. You can get better results than that if you use a bigger well ventilated case but even in the O11 Air Mini with two fans installed at the bottom the overall temperature is fantastic. This is what the GPU sounds like while under normal load. And when you crank up the fans to max speed, this is what it sounds like. Of course, this is just for your information. Nobody will ever need the GPU to run at 100% fan speed unless you're living in a tropical country and your case is basically an oven. Apart from that, we have the usual stuff that comes with high-end GPUs like the performance quiet mode switch, which somewhat changes the curve of the fans. But honestly, I just leave it at performance mode because it helps keeping your card cooler. Plus, the noise levels aren't that bad. We also have the already mentioned new connector, the 12 volt high power, which replaces the standard PCIe power connector. Now, instead of connecting three or four cables you only need to connect one at least in theory when this review goes up there's still no real adx 3.0 power supplies available on the market so you need to use the adapter cables which all manufacturers include inside of the box this way you can just use the old power supplies and connect the classic pcie power cables there is one problem with this approach however and it will affect people with smaller more compact cases like the one i have over here when you connect the adapter and connect the pcie cables the cable is just too big and too stiff and does not allow for the glass side panel to close. Of course, if you have a bigger case with more space inside, this will probably not affect you, but everyone else using smaller cases, compact cases, please be aware of that. Of course, when the new power supplies come out with the new connector, the problem should not be there anymore. And some companies decided to manufacture an aftermarket adapter cable, which has an angled connector, which should uh, help you get rid of this problem as well. In general, the new GPUs are much bigger than their predecessors and the TAF version is no different. It has 348mm in length, 150mm in width and 73mm in height, which means that you do need a slightly bigger case to fit this big boy in. The card takes 3.65 slots, which means that you need quite a bit of clearance inside of the case. The recommended PSU is at 850 watts. The GPU usually draws around 350 up to 400 watts of power, so it's good to assume that when pairing it with a high-end CPU like the 7950X from AMD or 13900 from Intel, you should have a PSU that will have at least 1000 watts of power to avoid any issues. Now let's look at the performance charts and we'll be comparing the 4090 TUF with 39 Ti Supreme, so a true battle of the titans. We'll start off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the performance difference here is clearly visible. 3090 Ti at 1080p and max settings averages at 116 fps while the 4090 is at 184. The 1% and 0.1% lows are also much better on the new GPU. At 1440p and max settings we get 99 fps on the 3090 Ti and on 4090 we're at 161 which is just an amazing result. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p the 3090 Ti manages to get an average fps count of 141 while the 4090 reaches 200 fps average. When we move to 1440p the 4090 Ti gets 118 fps on average and the 4090 gets 176 which is 50 percent more in apex legends the 3090 ti almost reaches the max fps cap with average fps at 286 
while the 4090 basically runs at the cap with 300 FPS average. On 1440p, the 3090 Ti falls down to 232 average FPS, while the 4090 only loses 3 FPS on average, staying at 297. Crazy results. We see similar crazy numbers for both GPUs and Valorant. At 1080p, the 3090 Ti gets 664 FPS on average, and the 4090 gets 619. Pretty weird results, especially that the 1% and 0.1% lows are better for the 4090. Maybe it's just a matter of drivers. At 1440p, the 4090 takes back the lead with average 581 FPS, while 3090 Ti gets 572. Moving on to Cyberpunk, at 1080p without ray tracing, we get 128 FPS on 3090 Ti and 192 on 4090. When we turn the ray tracing on and leave DLSS off, we get 66 FPS on 3090 Ti and almost double the FPS on 4090, 112. Just shows how much faster the new GPU is in terms of ray tracing performance. When we turn the LSS on in balanced mode, we get 100 FPS on 3090 Ti and 128 on 4090 bumping the resolution to 1440p on ultra-high settings. With no ray tracing or DLSS, we get 103 FPS on the 3090 Ti and 124 FPS on 4090. When we turn on ray tracing and leave DLSS off, we get 46 average FPS on 3090 Ti and 79 FPS on 4090. When we turn DLSS on in balanced mode, the FPS on 3090 Ti increases to 79 and on 4090 it jumps to 124. In Unigine Heaven, the difference for 1080p max settings between the 3090 Ti and 4090 is almost 50%, which also transfers to performance differences in games as we have just witnessed. In 1440p, the advantage for 4090 is also close to 50%, showing that the GPU is really powerful and quite the performance jump when compared to last generation's flagship, the 3090 Ti. In 4K gaming, the performance jump is also quite significant, allowing you to play competitive games at 4K, 100 144Hz without any issue. Even more demanding single player games should run smoothly even on high settings just as the results on the screen show you. So this brings us to a very interesting conclusion when it comes to the pricing of 4090. As you can see the performance difference between the last generation flagship and current generation flagship is around 50% while the price mostly remains the same. At least the MSRP for the 4090 is almost as high or maybe sometimes lower than what the 3090 Ti cost online. Now before we jump into the summary, let's see if the coil wine is still here. So as you can see, we do still have a coil wine and it can be reduced by choosing a really good quality power supply but uh, or giving the GPU some time to you know to settle in with all the capacitors and so on having it run at high frequencies high frame rates for a bit of time but I believe that in the end you won't be able to get rid of the coil wine completely and this is just how it is high frequencies high frame rates tend to uh, cost coil wine uh, and I even heard that the new uh, DDR5 memories with higher frequencies also have coil wine which is just ridiculous so it's just the reality we have to face and uh, just be prepared that your unit might also have it. And yeah, you will just have to live with it. So a quick summary. Are the new RTX 4090 series GPUs a great performance uplift from the 3090s or 3090 Ti's? Yes, the 50% increase in the general performance, in benchmarks and games in real scenarios shows that the new cards are plenty powerful. And if you're willing to spend $1,500 or maybe even $2,000 on a GPU, I think it will be well worth your money, especially, like I said, if we consider how much the 3090 Ti cost and how much the 4090 cost and the performance difference between them. If you have the money, if you're willing to spend that much on a GPU, just go ahead, you won't be disappointed, especially if you're looking for a high refresh rate 4K gaming. 144Hz is completely obtainable on the 4090s, and if you're willing to overclock it, you can get even more. However, I would suggest waiting uh, for AMD to make their move and see what Team Red has in stock for us for this generation of GPUs. This way you'll be able to make a more educated and more informative decision whether you want to stick with Nvidia with their 4090s or maybe move to AMD with their uh, new generation of GPUs. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also be interested in my other videos like for example the 3060 Ti long-term review. Either way, thanks so much for watching. I'm Laser, and I'll see you soon.